A very good evening and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I'm Kukule Tutele. Now today I am joined in studio by Riachad Butler, who is from Momentum. Now he's the Managing Executive for Client Solutions under the corporate sector there. He's also a certified financial planner and will be giving us some insights on the benefits of investing your bonus at the end of this year and not necessarily spending it on those uh, Christmas festivities that you're hoping to do, but rather an additional investment into your retirement savings and what the benefits benefits could look like in real terms. Richard, good to have you with us today in studio and thank you so much for making time. Well, for those who are lucky enough to have received some kind of bonuses at the end of the year, I think many mm. of them are thinking of fancy, you know, flat screen TVs, maybe new tires, new rooms fancy. and uh, 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 lots of other projects other than their retirement savings. But tell us why that should be something that they need to consider. Yeah, no, thanks a lot, Google, and thanks for the opportunity to be here. Um, yeah, it's an interesting time of the year. Um, some of us are lucky enough to get a few extra bucks here and there. Mm -hmm. And um, the big question is, do I spend it now, enjoy life, or do I save for the long term? You yeah. know, quite a bit of a challenge. We all have to grapple with these questions. I think, yeah, I think the important thing is, is uh, in my view, sometimes taking a bit of a balanced view, okay? Um, maybe putting some away, but also enjoying some, enjoying some of your money as well. You know, it's been a long year. There's a couple of options available. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that a lot of the hype in the last 12 months was around the tax-free savings accounts. Yes. And really that has been seen some great take up, um, especially for if you don't have a lot to save for, um, a lot of money to, to put away, the so tax-free savings account can be quite useful. Um, the other one that, that is almost lesser known, but also very, very useful is what is what we call additional voluntary contributions. And, and, and that's, a, that's effectively a mechanism of investing extra money into your pension fund in a very, very tax optimal and a very low cost manner. Tell us how that works though. Does Do I automatically just decide how much I want to put in and it goes in as a lump sum? Are there fees attached to it yeah. uh, for, for the administration of this additional uh, contribution? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's actually quite simple. Um, how it works is, is that currently every employee, if you are part of a pension fund, you are allowed to make on a monthly basis a contribution to a pension fund which is tax free. And that means the contribution is tax free. Now, every employee has a, got a, if it's a pension fund, you've got a limit of 7.5% of your salary you can make as a contribution. Now, a lot of people don't contribute the full 7.5% every month. Mm. So let's take an example, you, have, you contribute 5% every month. Then effectively, as a lump sum, you can invest the 2.5% that remains up to the limit as a single lump sum for the whole year. So if, if, it, if I take a simple example, if for 10 months you didn't reach your limit mm. and you have 2.5% extra every month, you can effect effectively invest 25% of your full year salary as, a, as an additional uh, um, investment, which is tax free ultimately. Yeah. It will go towards your retirement fund. So there's a long term investment, but ultimately, you know, we have to, you may have to put something away for the long term. Exactly. What are the benefits, though, in the long term? As you say, a little mm. bit, obviously, in Afrikaans, they say, what, biki biki mark mir, you know, <laughs> little by little <laughs> makes more. Uh, but in the long term, how significant could these little contributions actually be? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it really comes down to making small steps. You know, every year, if you just put a thousand rand away every year, the power of compound interest, mm. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sure you know, you know, but, but that really makes a big difference. And a lot of the pension funds also invest in equities, you know, you know, in the markets. And at times when markets are going well, even a small contribution over many, many years will make a big difference in the long term, which really just makes sure that you, when you retire one day, you have more money available to, to do just to, to have a pension ultimately. Exactly. You mentioned that this applies to pension funds. What about retirement annuities, which are a popular form of uh, retirement savings yeah, as yeah. well? The taxation rules on retirement annuities work slightly differently. Um, it, it, the, the similar principle applies. There are certain caps, um, certain maximum contributions that you can make. Um, if you haven't reached those contrib caps or con maximum contributions during the year, you can make uh, or catch them up effectively at the end of the year with a single investment. Um, uh -huh. So you should see the, see the same benefits. And as uh, you know, um, that definitely also includes from a, say, a cost perspective, because many companies like Momentum, you can actually invest that extra money without any additional fees being, being charged. Mm. If you compare that to starting a new savings product, some savings products actually require upfront fees and commissions and things like that, mm -hmm. where with an additional voluntary contribution, whether it's in a pension fund or in a retirement annuity fund, it does not attract those initial fees in mm. many cases. To come back to this uh, voluntary uh, uh, additional AVC, I understand is Absolute, how it's Absolutely. Yeah. Additional voluntary contribution. Contrib there, there we go, there teaching is. people new <laughs> phrases on the show. Uh, when it comes to this, can it happen at any time of the year? And what if your yes. contribution actually exceeds that 7.5% 
threshold, yeah. then where does that excess money have to go have to? Have to go, yeah. No, absolutely. You can actually do it at any time of the year. Um, people normally time it with a tax year, okay? So it's easier if a tax year runs from 1 March to 28 February or 29 February. Um, that people tend to do this in sort of in February because by then you actually know how, how much did you contribute over the last year just to catch up. So that's just practically how people, people choose to do. So February month is a good month for that. Um, so that's the first one. But, but you really don't, you, you can really make it whenever you want. There's no restriction, um, it's up, up to you ultimately. Exactly. To come back to the theme of retirement, there's some individuals who might not be lucky enough to get a 13th check uh, and will be struggling their way through December. Yeah, and then there's yeah. January to be <laughs> concerned about. Mm -hmm. uh, how then do they need to uh, play this out in the field? Um, uh, ensuring that you have enough retirement savings, you contribute a little bit extra where you can, yeah, uh, yeah. even though financially things yeah, aren't yeah, uh, yeah. pretty. It's an unfortunate position that many South Africans are in, eh? and I think we need to find ways, innovative ways of solving for the problem. You know? And ultimately, if you don't have enough money on a monthly basis to save, there's really just one thing you can do. You have to spend less. Yeah. Um, and you know, how do you do that? Now, what is quite interesting uh, over the last, say, year and year and a half, 18 months, a lot of even banks and insurance companies have quite a lot of rewards programs. You know? If you look at the Momentum Multiply program, just take a simple example. Um, on the highest tier status, you can get up to 40% back from an Edcon store. So that's quite a lot of money. So, so if you're quite smart and you make sure you understand your rewards programs, you engage with them, whether it's through your bank or wherever, make sure you make, make the most of it. Mm. Because that, saving a 20% here and a 10% there, is extra money ultimately that's just going to take out a little bit of that stress mm. um, ultimately. And that will ultimately help quite a bit in terms of your January worries. Exactly. The second thing I think is quite, quite critical is a lot of the genuine worry comes from the surprise of I have spent so much. And, and how do you prevent that? You know, you know where is, uh, obviously we lost a few weeks back, we had Black Friday. Yes. You know, oh, and the lure of Black Friday, you know, you simply go in and it's big saving, saving, saving. Mm. And, and even when we go there, it is quite critical that you plan your spending well in advance. Make sure, you, even if it's a simple, I don't want to call it a budget, but take a simple list, list what you want to spend on who, where do you want to pay gifts on, how you want to spend time, um, how do you want to spend money on food for the, for the, for the Christmas period. Mm. You know, make sure you plan it well, so that when you, are, when you go into the shop and you're lured by all the discounts and the savings, um, don't get carried away. Maybe a little, but not too much. <laughs> and that will just help a little bit in terms of, you know, when you get to January, the position that you are in is actually a position that you expected. You planned for this. Exactly. And, and that will take out a lot of the stress. Exactly. Plan, 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 uh, like you say, and sticking to that plan fundamentally as Absolutely. one in the execution and not, not getting distracted on the mm, sidelines. Mm, mm. Recha, to touch on another topic which uh, always finds a lot of prevalence, we know that in South Africa, we're not a country of savers. Only, what, 4% of the country's population can retire affordably. Yeah, uh, does yeah. it go back to... 15% of one's salary needs to go towards retirement savings and uh, are there opportunities to maybe tweak that number where yeah, possible to yeah. suit the individual's needs? Yeah, that's, that's a big debate. Um, the reality is, is that 15% of your salary should be saved if you start very young and throughout your working life, when you change jobs, you preserve the money that you've got available. Yeah. Now the reality is, is that less than 10% of people actually preserve. So the South African reality is, is that the number is the true number is f much higher than 15%. It should probably be close to 30%. Okay, why? Because a lot of people have over the years withdrawn their money when they change jobs. Mm. And people tend to forget that. Um, so the power of preservation, and it really comes back to saving and making the right smart choices when you change jobs. There's nothing nicer as changing a job and give yourself that new car, you know, arriving in the, mm. uh, in the new parking lot, all shiny. You know, it's nice and sort of emotive, but ultimately it's going to hit you in the long term. And that's really going to, you know, not put you in a position in a, to have a comfortable retirement. Mm -hmm. So look at the alternative savings options. You mentioned yeah. tax-free savings yeah. accounts as well as an alternative. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and again, that whole discussion around diversified approaches towards savings and investment. Is that still something that we need to look at, despite how volatile the markets are and can scare off some retail investors? Eh? Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. It is, you know, investment is, is a long-term game. Um, we shouldn't be carried away by emotions when markets go up, markets go down. I think you're going to have a very bad day if you, <laughs> if you watch the market on a daily or hourly basis. Um, so it's really important that you, that you do a proper needs analysis. It is important that you sit down with a credible financial advisor, somebody that can, can take you through, understand your needs, understand your unique circumstances, understand the realities mm. that you can't save enough, you know, and then come up with a plan. Come up with a plan and, and come up with a couple of suggestions of, you know what, use this vehicle, use that vehicle. Um, because there is unfortunately no one size fits all because we are unique people, ultimately. Exactly.
Something else that comes to mind that we so often hear about um, before we get to our closing points is a retirement annuity and a pension fund. Is mm -hmm. that always a good solution, investing in both for your mm -hmm. retirement mm -hmm. savings? It, it, it certainly can be for, for many individuals that does work. Um, and, and a simple reason for that is, is that the, on the pension fund side, there are sometimes limits to the, so almost the employer's maximum contribution rate. So you don't hit that, that, that sort of the maximum contribution rate. So you almost have a bit of tax available, a tax saving uh, available that you can use in an alternative vehicle. So some pension funds don't give you the flexibility of investing more as an individual because all the employees must invest the same amount of money. Mm. Uh, in those cases, having an additional vehicle like a retirement annuity um, could be worth your while. Um, Especially in those cases, it's critical that you get the help of a financial advisor yeah. because we're now talking about tax structuring of contributions in, a, in an optimal way. Mm. It can get quite tricky. Um, so there's really good value in there. And also then ultimately making sure that when you select those vehicles, diversify where you invest. Um, there's no point in only investing in equities. It's way too risky. Mm. You know, it could be in a bit of invest, a bit of equities, a bit of cash, a bit of property, link, uh, listed property investments as well. It's also another way of, 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 of just spreading your assets and diversifying the risk and there's true value, proven value over the long term in taking a, a more um, multi-asset class approach to your savings. Exactly. Riachard, we've certainly said quite a bit, but let's get a quick reminder of some of the key methods and uh, elements of our conversation that we need to bear in mind tonight. Riachard, we come back to you just to get your closing comments uh, for tonight's discussion. Uh, the key elements for those who have those extra rands in their bank account and why they should look at AVC mm. as an alternative. AVCs are great, simple reason. It is easy and it's very, very low cost and the contributions could be tax deductible. Mm. That's the power. Um, ultimately of an additional voluntary contribution. Exactly. AVCs, uh, hopefully uh, that's something that uh, a lot of South Africans will consider this evening. But that's where we leave it for personal finance tonight. A big thank you once more to our guest for joining us, uh, Riachard Butler, who is from uh, Momentum, where he is the Managing Executive for Client Solutions under the corporate strategy there, together as a CFP, giving us some sound financial advice. Uh, but do feel free to uh, tweet any of your comments and suggestions and tell us if you'll be making use of AVCs. You can tweet at CNBC Africa using the hashtag finance410 or to myself at Gukum Fupi on Twitter. Until next time, it's goodbye for now. <music>